Hi everyone, this is Brandy. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm going to show you today how to make this envelope out of a doily. And these are just paper doilies. I got these at Dollar Tree. And this envelope I made out of this like large size doily. Um, I'm not sure how big it is. I didn't measure it. But let's see, we can put it on here and it's about 12 inch, it's a 12 inch. So, um, but today I'm gonna try to make it out of the smaller one and it's an eight inch. So this is a lined um, envelope. I did line it with some um, coffee dyed scrapbook paper. And then I did ink this after I made it and then added some embellishments. But today I'm going to try to do some ink smushing. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use Vintage Photo. And I'm just going to put some of it out on the glass mat. Probably too much. And then I'm going to take my Distress Sprayer and just squirt that down. And then you just take your doily, press it down. And I love doing this. I like coffee dyeing too, but this is really fun. You get all kinds of um, different effects with this. This is one of my favorite things to do. So I hope everyone's having a great day. Uh, today I am going for a job interview. I'm not quite sure how um, my job is going to affect me filming for my YouTube, but I'm sure I'll be able to work out something. Um, hopefully I'll, you know, get the job. It's just at a local grocery store. I didn't want to um, drive too far away from home. I do still have one daughter who's in, ele not elementary school, she's in middle school now, but I would just rather be closer to home. And we're just gonna let this dry and then I'll be back. Okay, so I did cheat and dry that with my heat gun. I'm going to put this in our fall journal. So um, I'm going to use fired brick and fossilized amber distress oxides. And I really like the distress oxides. They give, um, they're more opaque and they just give like a um, more of an, well, I guess you could say an oxide <laughs> finish. Um, hide the distress sprayer from myself. So I'm just going to try to put it, not covering it as much as I did with the um, other ink. All right, I like that. I'm gonna put a little more yellow in the middle. Okay, since I have this other dolly sitting over here, I'm just going to try to get that rest of that ink up with it. Instead of wasting it like I did the other. Okay, so that actually looks really pretty. We could probably use that in the fall journal too. Okay, I'm gonna dry this and then I'll be back. Okay, so I have it dry. Now the next step, this is not a science. I'm sure you could measure it and do it perfect, but what I did was I found this little center part is what I want my flap to be. And I'm sure I have uh, I folded it several times, but you just wanna fold the sides in and I folded them in to right about the spot where the center part starts it does have the solid center and then you just want to fold the bottom up until it's almost to this solid part all right now what I don't like is these sides don't meet up with each other so I'm just going to unfold this a little bit Okay, now that's what I want it to be. 
You want to have some of that solid piece show in there because that's going to give it a little bit more stability. And this is going to be a small envelope. Of course, the other one I made, the larger your doily, the bigger your envelope would be. Okay, so this is this is what it's going to look like. And it's not perfectly square, but that's okay. And, you know, it's, it's going to work. So the next thing we want to do is open it back up. And then we want to measure across. And this is... I got to put my glasses on three and I can't tell three and three quarters of an inch. Okay. And then I need to see where we want to measure. This is the bottom. And then we want to measure to this fold here for the flap. So that is five and three quarters. Okay. And we can shave some off here and there if we need to. Okay. So we have three and three quarters by five and three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to cut the paper for that and I'll be back. Okay, so I cut it and this is five and three quarters and this I cut three and three quarters and it was a little wide. So I did trim it down just a little bit. Now this, your top flap is going to be your shorter flap and you want to make sure you leave a space where you're not putting this paper. So you don't want to start it all the way to the top of the flap there. But on this other side, on the bottom, you do want it to go all the way down to the bottom. Put a little glue on here and glue it down just to tack it down. Don't wanna put a ton of glue and don't put glue on the outside edges because we're gonna sew it. Now, if you don't have a sewing machine, you could just glue it. It would probably be just fine. I've never done it that way, but I don't think it would really hurt much. And I'm just gonna put some glue because I just want to make sure it doesn't scooch around while I'm trying to sew it. Okay, after you glue your paper down, just remember glue just in the center. Then you're gonna to want to do a zigzag stitch. Just start here at the top and go all the way to the end. Don't sew the middle sections, just on each side. I'm gonna go do that and I'll be back. Okay, once you've sewn those, you kind of want to well, you want to trim all your threads and then you want to take this and refold it down so you can really see where your fold is. Just make sure you have a good crease there. Now you want to take another piece of your coffee dyed paper and you just want to line up the edges on one side and then mark it with a pencil to where you want to cut. You want to make sure you're going all the way to the edge of this scallop here. So we want to go out here and you can cut a little bit on the other side of that. We're going to trim it. Now, before we stick that on, we're going to trim these, this fold over of the doily a little bit. And I'm just going to come over and cut not to the very edge, and we are only doing the top layer. Make sure you don't cut that bottom layer. But I want to leave a bit of that folded area. So you can see here, you can still, you still have some that's folded down. We're going to glue that just to help reinforce the edges, but we won't have this um, double layer that'll show through our flap. Just be careful and make sure you don't cut through to the other side. And once you have that cut, just put a little bit of glue under those little flap areas and just stick those down. Trim that thread a little bit. I kind of went a little off kilter there with the sewing machine, but it'll still work all the, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue this down. After we've trimmed those flaps, we're gonna glue this down. Just going to make sure, now this part you wanna make sure it's glued well. We won't be sewing over this. So you just wanna make sure you get every pit, bit of it covered. Now, I put a little glue a little bit too far down. You actually don't want to glue over where the fold is. That's why I wanted you to get a good crease where that fold line is, because we don't want to put the paper in the crease. I want to put it right above where the crease is for the closure. 
Okay, so see there's our crease there. We don't want the paper in that section. That should be empty right here. Okay, now we're just going to trim right along the edges of this flap. Did cut a little along on this side. We can trim that up a little bit also. So the next thing you're going to do is take a piece of fabric and you want this piece of fabric to go all the way across and you want it to go right where that fold is and cover the edges of both pieces of paper. So it just needs to be wide enough for that. This one's a little long. Let me see if I can if it'll tear for me, probably not, but that's okay. We'll just trim it up. And then we'll cut it down the size. Hopefully I did it right. Okay, so now we're just going to put glue all in this area here to glue that fabric down. Now, if you didn't get your edges glued down well, just come back and put a little glue along the edges. And you could use Fabri-Tac for this. I'm not because it seems to get be a little bit wetter and I don't wanna get that doily too wet. Just if you use Fabri-Tac, just use it sparingly. All right, so now that we have that stuck then we're going to come back to fold this. So we want it to be right, see where your zigzag stitches started here? You wanna to fold to the top of those stitches with this piece. So it should cover up the edge of your fabric and then just get a good crease on that and then you can even test by putting your flap down. Now, if you want, before you sew, you can just kind of, just do, not really cut along the edge of this scallop, but just kind of do a little, because you do need those edges to sew on, but you can kind of make it be a little more gradual. This part isn't necessary. I like it, but you know, it's you. it really does draw attention to the fact that it's not symmetrical though, so if that bothers you, then you can skip that step and just leave it straight across. So I'm just going to now take my sewing machine and I'm going to do a straight stitch right here on each side to sew it together. Okay, now I just sewed a straight stitch right over in the center of that zigzag stitch. I did um, back stitch on, especially on this top edge because there is fabric um, there to kind of reinforce it. But when you want to slide things in and out of the envelope, you don't want that to pop open. But it is a lined envelope, so nothing's going to get stuck on the doily. So you have the laciness of the doily here and on your flap. And if you wanted to, you could come back with some vintage photo and just kind of ink your edges up. And then I'm going to decorate it on this outer part. Oops. That is the only thing with the doily is it's fragile. So you may have to do some repair work. So if you have a little piece that gets a little um, messed up, just glue it down, just do some repair work. And you could glue that liner part onto your center part. Let's decorate better. this up with a couple of skeleton leaves. I have a dark one and a light one. And we're just going to stick those down. Actually, let's put it on top of this little piece of fabric I have. And then I have this 
Um, well, this is kind of big for this. I don't want to use that. That's too big. Let me dig out, dig out my stamps and see what I can find. When I reorganized everything, I hid everything from myself. All right, so let's see what we have that might go. I don't have a ton of stamps. I had bought one pack of stamps. And, um, you know, you don't know what you're gonna get. Not like this. Okay, so we're just going to, I'm gonna ink this up a little bit just to make a little more age. And I wish I had like a postage, a canceled postage um, stamp, but I don't have one of those. So we'll just have to imagine the rest of this. It is a pretty large stamp for this but envelope, but that's okay. We're just gonna go with it. Okay, and if you wanted to, you could uh, come back and decorate this side. I still feel like it needs something here. Maybe we'll put some words. Let's see, how about someone loves you? I like that. We'll put that on there. All right, so there's our fall doily envelope and you can put you a little tag or journaling card inside it and I did not cut all my strings get that one cut and then like this is what the bigger doily would look like if you did it and this was just some Tim Holtz ephemera layers I think this was black and gray kind of grayscale and I colored it with some uh, alcohol markers and of course you can always do a decoration on the other side too so thanks for tuning into my channel today. I hope y'all will all uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks to all my uh, new subscribers and I hope y'all have a great day. Bye.